Hello again. Good evening. Uh, you, 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 you have your hands full. Sorry? Oh, we, we met last night. We, we, we sh shared the, the table last night. Yes? Uh, we, we, we had a, a, a wonderful chat, too, about uh, chap lips. About? Chap lips and chillblains. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> of course, and a man with a very talented family. Oh, God, oh, God, don't remind me. <laughs> oh, a very gifted daughter. Yeah, absolutely yeah, please, so please, don't, don't embarrass me. Well, of course I remember. I, I, forgive me. I, I, sit down. Uh, sit down. When I came to the door, I, 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 I recognized you instantly. Uh, here. By, by, by the back of your head. Yes? Yes, it, it looks as, uh, well, it looks as though we have the place to ourselves again tonight. Oh, and you've been to rehearsals again. Ah, uh, ah, uh, nonstop since early afternoon. At the Opera House. Ah, uh, yes, at the Opera House. You always rehearse and dress? German conductor, Munich, obsessed with formality. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy your tea. And you enjoy yours. That's uh, uh, soup. Still. Yeah. And brown bread. Is it fresh? Oh, yes, it's brown. <laughs> uh, the same uh, witch at the counter, did you notice her? She, she snarled at me when I paid her. She'd like to You're joking, aren't you? <laughs> Won't you sit down? No, no, no. You're up you're to your... I'm so sorry. This, this stuff has my head uh, No, I'm, I'm interrupting you. And, and I, I... You're not interrupting me, but you are making me very uncomfortable to stand. stand. Sorry. Sorry, yes. Thank you. Uh, Sonia. Isn't it? Sonia. Ah, yes. Yes. Sonia's new great Ah, how do you do? Andre. Andre. <coughs> yes. And, uh, Andre Morozorov. Ah. <laughs> how do you do? The cabbage soup. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Being giddy. <laughs> my head is a little bad. <laughs> I'm tired too. <laughs> train tomorrow. Uh, you're right. How in God's name did we get on the skin of that? Well, you said you had some herbal cures. Uh, I don't. <laughs> Why would I say that? I, I, I couldn't have been more fat. Uh, well, you're right. Right. It, I, I, it couldn't have been. Uh, forgive me. But I am ravenous. Uh, we talked about living alone. So, so, so we did. Uh, and how to cope with it? Mm, mm, yes, yes. We agreed that there were times when it was just a little bit difficult. Uh, it, it must be. Mm, we did agree, didn't we? How long was your wife in bed? I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that disgraceful? Uh, a long time. <laughs> 17 years, 17 years. And your uncle? 19 years, next September the 9th, God be good. Mm. And I'm ashamed to say we got a bit emotional last night. Last night. <laughs> no, you didn't, but I did. Did, did you? I think I made the better choice. I that soup looks so good. Lukewarm. Oh, no. Did you get it back there? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I couldn't. Get it? You don't. No, 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 no. Gorgon? No, no, no. Oh, no, I can't. No, no. <laughs> no, please. Um, it's, it's beautiful lukewarm. <laughs> It's brown, yes. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> oh, and um, how were your rehearsals tonight? Oh, no, we played well, I think. But my feet and legs are sore. Can you imagine what it's like standing in one spot for over six hours? Agony. Mm. The orchestra rehearses standing up? No. No, it doesn't. It, it, it's actually, we. well, no, no, it doesn't actually rehearse standing up. What, what happens is this. Um, uh, uh, when you sit on a hard chair for a very, very long time, especially in the string section, your bottom goes numb. Excuse me. I mean, <laughs> but, 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 pardon me. Uh, but, but so what you have to do is every so often you have to leap to your feet and slap your thighs and quicken the flow of blood throughout your whole body. But then 
And then, then, then when, with all that standing on your feet, they, they begin to go numb. And, and, and so that, that after five, six hours of rehearsing, you're numb all over because of, of these perplexing demands on the circulation. And, 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 and it just can't decide which deserves more attention, feet or bottom. So what it does, it does nothing at all. So, so that, that, that after a day's rehearsal, you can hardly feel anything, if you beg my pardon. Um, why, especially in the string section? <laughs> you said you go very numb, especially in the string section. Why? Because in every orchestra, the string section, the string players are big wine drinkers yeah. and notorious gossips. I have no idea what you're saying, Andre. No, 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 yes, I'm, but, but I'm explaining it very poorly. Well, go I, back I, to the beginning. I, it is La Boheme you were hosting. La Boheme. Uh, at the opera house. Uh, you're right. Uh, an opera by Puccini. You told me last night. Yes, yes. Born in Lucca in 1858. So it said in the paper. Oh. Is he still alive, this uh, Puccini? Oh, no, no, no. I wouldn't think so. Oh. <laughs> Could be, couldn't he? I'm sure he's dead. You know he's dead? No. <laughs> well, then don't be so gloomy. The conductor is a bully for Munich, the orchestra is efficient, and Mimi is self is thrilling. Well, have you seen her picture in the poster? Baby. And she's only 19. Mm. Good for her. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be a huge popular success. How do you know? Well, you said for yourself. Oh, did I? Oh, well, I I don't think I could have said, could I? Uh, well, well, when does it open? Tomorrow night. Oh, I would love to see it, but I have to be home by tomorrow night. Oh, oh well, it's going to be a thrilling night. I'm really excited by it all. <laughs> well, enthusiasm, that's better. <laughs> well, what, 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 why the surprise? I'm, I'm, I'm a great enthusiast. I mean, maybe the girls, my sisters, they say that I, it's my nature to be effervescent. They say, how'd your meeting go today? <laughs> Good, uh, great, but couldn't have been more satisfactory. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted. The bank in the morning and all afternoon with the Ministry of Agriculture people couldn't have been more helpful than this agriculture people. Well, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> the bank has come up with a remarkable idea. What they propose is what they strongly urge me to do. Oh, I, I, I'm not going to say it. No, no, please, please. I'm well, interested. I'm well, interested. They, they say that I have got to cut out the crop we've always grown. And wheat, dry corn, barley, I, that's finished too risky and too difficult for a woman on her own. And, and what they insist but the is agriculture the, the bank. Actually, um, and, and, no, of course they don't insist, but what they advise me to do is to plant the whole estate with trees. The entire place. <laughs> trees everywhere. <laughs> well, how many? Well, 300. Oh. I, I was wrestling with this documentation when you came in. Very, very complicated. And everything seems to have been agreed on so suddenly. But I will get on top of it all. I mean, it is a, is a little time and a... Uh, they assure me that they, they will provide me with adequate income, ultimately, probably when I'm dead. Uh, could be very exciting. Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. That's better. <laughs> and a complete break with the past. That would be such a relief, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm. Well, a lot to be said for. Mm. There it is, isn't there? Mm. And trees aren't just magnificent things in themselves. Of course, they adorn the earth and affect the climate, but they also inspire in us a sense of awe and offer us a source of spiritual sustenance. Wrong word. Not mine. A very dear friend of mine, a passionate tree man. Well, have you, have you talked to him about the proposal? Oh, he, he would be all over it, I know. I, look at this rubbish. Titles and then overdrafts and mortgages, baffling, isn't it? Oh, and I used to be so skillful at all this stuff, as good as any accountant. But I don't look so skeptical. No. I was. And Uncle Vanya was so happy to let me run the estate because I was confident at it. And because he knew in his heart he was incompetent. Well, what, what, 
What does running in a state entail? <laughs> I hired the men, I rented the machinery, haggled in the market, kept the accounts, everything for God's sake. I did the books for our two neighbors for years and years. Well, just like my Natasha, my wife Natasha. Mm -hmm. uh, wizard of accounts, too. Oh, God have mercy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then to that. But no, I'm not saying that I was a wizard. Well, oh, no, well Natasha wasn't a, a wizard uh, either, not at all. Uh, just, <laughs> But I was very that, that, yeah, that, that's closer. Okay. Then two things happened almost simultaneously. My father died in Moscow, and his very young widow, my stepmother, came to live with us. The beautiful, the exquisite Celine. Fair, elegant, charming, and who's to say, many, many partners. Exactly the same age as myself, but so beautiful. And poor Uncle Vanya fell madly in love with me for the first time in his life, utterly, hopelessly, and he had he was 25 years older than her. Well, the two was so beautiful. And I, I can't tell you, exactly the same age as myself. And that was the second thing that happened, of course it was because of his sudden dementia, was that sweet Uncle Vanya decided one morning that running a, an estate was man's work. He must take over all the burdens himself, and that's what he did, but with all the doggedness and crude determination <clears throat> that only an indecisive man can muster. And, and then the estate began to collapse, and, and our money problems became serious and grew greater every year until this. He, he knew he was a, a, a complete Methodist, but he wouldn't t let me take it over again. And then the beautiful Elena, gone. And he became to become sullen and cantankerous and obsessed with trivial things. Uh, the doctor said the stroke was probably just brought on by anxiety. Probably. And then he collapsed at breakfast a, a calm, harvest morning. He never regained consciousness. I sent word to Elena. She was holidaying in France. But she didn't come. Vanya didn't have no idea she had. But what was so happy for me was that over those three weeks that he lay there, I watched his face shed every trace of anxiety and of ugly obstinacy. And I saw in him return to that benign, bumbling Uncle Vanya he once was. That gentle creature who used to bang the table and say, I'm positive, I'm right, <laughs> with no conviction whatsoever. Just you and he alone in the state. He was the only family I ever knew. So, so you told me. And watching his life ebbing away, I, I knew that a core part of me was, was going with him. Oh, I wish I had dry breath again. It lasted just three weeks. Uh, three <coughs> weeks and a day. Oh, oh, we sat up with him every night, Michael and I, one on each side. Michael? My very dear friend, the, the tree enthusiast, my family doctor. Oh, oh, yes. After the servants had gone to bed, the, the little house was silent. It was a difficult time, but it was a privileged time. And in that vigil we kept together, Michael and I, all alone, on each side of the bed, not speaking, but being together, as we didn't have to go out and drunk people who would doze off. But <laughs> I knew that those were the most serene and, and most fulfilled days of my life. Hmm. Um, Michael what? Astro. <laughs> Dr. Michael Astro. A man with a vision and, and close to saintliness. <laughs> and not only silver. <laughs> Have you trees? Oh, yes, yes. Well, why didn't you say so? A plantation owner, the very man who advised me. Well, I'll, I'll tell you all that I can. <laughs> well, how many trees have you? Well, we have two birches at the bottom. <laughs> 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 two trees, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, we need to stay here. Uh, In order to Oh, no, well, well, no, we're not farming people. Uh, it's not even a big one. Well, <laughs> Quarter of an acre. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, we were never, you know, farming people. Father was an army man, and 
I was born in Moscow. I was only four when his regiment was posted in Taganrog, in the, almost 800 miles south of here. That's where I've lived all my life. He had his own regiment? No, yes. General Razopov, <laughs> a man of such determination, admirable. So you traveled 500 miles just to do this opera? No, there isn't much work for violinists in Taganrog. Uh, well, I, 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 you know, I, I do some teaching. I'm, I'm not a great violinist, but, but I travel when I get the chance. Yeah, well, all the same, that's real enthusiasm. Good for you. Um, can, can, can I get you some oh. fresh, some tea? No, no. 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 <clears throat> all right. Well, that, I mean, that must be cold. It, it is fine. Oh. Well, um, forgive me for last night, Sonia. Um. God knows what Robert Scheib talked about, about the children. Bobbick is a doctor, and Sophie is an engineer. You were so proud of him. Um, what an untruth, I'm afraid. Uh, Bobbick gave up medicine after a year, and, uh, and is sort of a vagrant now. And, and, and then <laughs> I hear the last scene here in Moscow. Sophie never qualified either. Worked for a, a well, worked for a while with a building firm, and now lives somewhere in Kazakhstan. <laughs> no. They have their own lives. They have. They have. They have. They have. They have. N Natasha used to say, well, Natasha, my wife, well, she, she, their mother, she, she used to say that, that my sisters spoiled them because they had no children of their own. But, but they weren't spoiled. Oh, no. they, that Natasha was just a bit naughty because the girls never really made her welcome in the house. C considered her a little graceless. Her, her country vulgar made them uneasy. What about some soup? I, I don't think so. What soup and bread? Nothing. Mm, it's brown. And fresh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, fresh bread. <laughs> I can get I can be giddy too, you know. <laughs> uh, how many sisters have you? Oh <laughs> just two now. Poor Masha. Died like fifteen years ago. Oh, she must have been young. Thirty. Shot herself with father's old revolver. Oh God! Well, but for some years before she had already left, uh, the, uh, gone in on herself, a love not requited, as they say. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, Lieutenant Colonel married. Poor Masha was married to a local teacher. Uh, the affair was tempestuous while it lasted, and then the Lieutenant Colonel he just posted in Moscow and just vanished from her life. She wrote to him every day, then every week, and then, then she never heard from him. Just vanished from her life. It was, it was then she began to withdraw from, from all of us. But the other two girls, I mean, I can tell you, I can tell you how courageous, how intelligent those ladies are, but I've always been surprised by one thing, especially since they are such intelligent girls. And what surprises me, is, oh gosh, I'm just talking far too much. What surprises you as well? That they believe that the life that they lead in Taganrog isn't their real life at all. Not that they, not that they're authentic life. Isn't that silly? Uh, they, their life in Taganrog is 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 a sort of a protracted waiting time for the real life that still has hasn't happened. And they are convinced that the authentic life is available here in Moscow of their childhood, a Moscow they haven't seen in over forty years. Isn't that peculiar? I don't think so. Well, of course you do. I'm sure that Masha believed absolutely in the Moscow. Maybe. But I, I, I know, too, that they will never leave Taganrog. Because they know that, in their hearts, that Moscow is a dream life. It's just a dream. But I suppose some people like that uh, live like that in perpetual expectation. Maybe they do. Peculiar, isn't it? You said so yourself. It, it's obvious you love me. Well, they, they, love, they love me too, even though I'm a bit of a failure. Well, I mean, because I am a failure. I mean, I was expected to become a great academic. Can you imagine me? But I do know that life has eluded those intelligent girls. To live your life in a, in a waiting room, that, that's not strange. Well, that's, that's not how you live your life. What stupid dreams have you, or are you waiting for to be realized? Well, I, I, 
I don't mean to. Uh, I, 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 I'm gonna get some tea, some tea, sure. sure. If she tries to bite, I'll, I'll give you a shout. <laughs> I must stop calling them girls, my sisters. They're in their 40s, for God's sake. small fiction, a trivial little falsehood. Oh, well, maybe just a tiny fabrication. What are you saying? Okay. The Natasha, my wife. Your wife, my wife. Uh, yeah, well, you're, you're so right. My wife, Natasha, <gasps> oh, she still isn't dead. I, mean, <laughs> I was wrong of me to say that she is. And I said, I said, God have mercy on her. And that's very, very unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> went off with the chairman of the local district, creature called Protopopo. <laughs> Bobkick and uh, Sophie were eight and ten at the time. What became of them? Natasha? Well, naturally, Natasha wanted to take them with her, but Protopopo, uh, well, they, he wouldn't have them near him. So uh, she had to leave them behind. Can you imagine the wrench that must have been for her? So. Oh, yes, it was devastating. I was working in the council at the, at the time, dispatch clerk, second class. And of course, I had to get out. The children were fortunate to have their aunts to look after them. We are all fortunate, because after Natasha left, I'm afraid, I became a little disturbed. <coughs> Life uh, became a little too difficult for me. And well, for almost 10 years, the girls valuable then. But th that doesn't matter. Have you seen Natasha since you walked out? Frequently. She lives just outside of town. Splendid, big mansion on the bank of the river. Always had a weakness for little ostentations. <laughs> but I, 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 I really am alone. If, if, if you don't count the girls. <laughs> Sorry, I mean the middle-aged women. Oh my Look at the time. Uh, you you have to have an early start. You you you. you. A drop. Oh, what is this? Vodka. <laughs> You're joking, uh huh? From Kaka. Oh, Best in the country. What a bold bold woman. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And are you a bottom? No, don't mention 